by grief because after 11 years of being my wife, she had cheated on me with a man. I was found with her in my arms in a fit of hysteria. Because of my harsh words to her when she confessed, I told the police that her death was my fault. That sealed my fate. I'm going to meet with a court-appointed shrink today. If he will tell the authorities that I was out of my mind when Francine died, then I'll, I might be spared the electric chair. This is a last-ditch effort by my attorney. Ladies and gentlemen, the things you'll hear over the next two hours represent the views and opinions of Dead Air Radio and the people making them. All opinions and quotations in no way represent Riverwest Radio and are the sole responsibility of the producer, guests, and callers. Riverwest Radio is not liable for any legal issues arising from the content of this program. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome to Dead Air Radio. I, of course, am Adam Barton with me. My co-host, Ben Bourgeois. Hey, hey. How you doing, Ben? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Andrew, once again, couldn't be here. He's he's fired. Yeah, can we... I don't suppose you have a boo. No. No, no boo. Just, just fired. Oh, wait. Here it is. Boo. Oh. Take that, Andrew. Yeah. You gotta work. You gotta work. So we got a big fundraiser coming up. River West Radio fundraiser. Ooh. September 28th, Friday, 8 p.m. at Linneman's. Got a bunch of bands. Got a bunch of comedy. Okay. You can check it out. Everyone should check it out, in fact. That sounds pretty good. Make a little money, drink a little beer. Bring a little love to River West Radio. For sure. You know we'll be there. Oh, we'll be there. We'll be there. We'll be there. We won't be square. We'll be there. No, we'll just be there. So I had a fun day today. I went uh, went around taking pictures. I got that new camera. Yeah. The new camera in the mail. It was pretty cool. It's nice to get out and walk around once in a while, see the uh, sights of the city. Just uh, not for any particular reason, just for fun? Yeah, just for fun. So how much would you say, what's the minimum cost of a camera that's really, really worth a damn, that you could do everything that you'd want to with? Everything everything that you'd want uh, to? I shouldn't say that because that could be like super high end, but for... Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like for just about any of your needs, unless you're doing like professional, like crazy shots or whatever. Well, I got the body of mine for just $150. It's not, it's not quite everything I would want. I would say the minimum for something r- real sweet, new, uh, about a grand probably. It's yeah. more about the lenses than the camera because you can get a camera that does most things you needed to relatively cheaply but yeah. the the lenses are where where it's getting to be a real issue so like a grand yeah but like i said i mean my camera new would be like 500 for the body i got it for 150 and it does you know it's got enough megapixels it shoots like five frames a second it can uh got a pretty high iso and some good good evaluative metering but it's by no means a professional model Sounds almost as good as my iPhone. Almost. You know, it's almost there. The new iPhone's a little nicer than my camera. I think you can do a little more. Yeah, I haven't gotten a chance to look into that too much, but I'm excited for it. I want to get it. I spent a good portion of my day at work watching the live blog of the keynote. Yeah, some people get crazy about that. I don't bother. I just... I just look at Facebook like that night and everything I need to know somebody will post. It was fun. I've never like followed a live blog of anything I, before. I, I've watched it before, but you know. It was an interesting setup, the live blog. 
It's so cool. what else are they announcing? Nothing. They didn't announce it's anything just else really. They have a new. They have a new i. Uh, iOS. The 5. iPod Touch is new, and uh, well, they did all the iOS six stuff at their last six. event. Yeah. And then uh, there's new iPod Nanos that look like they look like mini iPhones now. Oh. Uh, I don't know. Nothing else too exciting. It's Wait, hard so to get the excited nanos about. are getting bigger again. The nanos are big again. Yeah. I don't understand. And why. they look like they look like little two-inch iPhones. They have the same home button and a touch screen. I guess that's cool. I mean, I, I'd have to see it, but it's cool. Like it's just hard to get excited about a new iPod because yeah, they're they've I mean, kind of it, done it. It's been perfected you know? yeah. so long ago that everything they change now is just gonna be you know. Everyone will hate it at first, then it'll become the standard, and then everyone's going to hate the new one. I'm just waiting for a 164-gig iPod Touch. That would be the only way I'd buy a new iPod, is some because I have the Classic. What What do you need that for? Like, you're, you're talking like a 180? A, a 180? Well, you're saying, well, like, well, as whatever far as the gigage? Yeah, the, gig, the gigage. Because uh, I have the iPod Classic because I like to have all my music on it. Yeah. But it'd be cool to have the iPod Touch with all my music on it. I mean, if, if you're just doing music, how could you need more than 80 gigs? Well, I have, uh, I have 65 gigs of music currently. That's what I'm saying. Well, right, but I, I like I like the idea that it's unrealistic for me to fill it. Okay, yeah, eighty I understand gigs, that. maybe a couple. It's, I mean, it's not like iPods last more than a few years, anyways, because they don't. They last like three years max. Yeah, I then guess that's a good point. But still, I like you know I like the idea of having. It's like having a terabyte hard drive. You're like, I'm good. See, but you're you're still taking a step sideways instead of just going with getting like an iPhone. If they just had enough storage on the iPhone for all of your music, then everything would be all well and good, and you could just do away with the iPod altogether. Well, yes yes and no. I do like having a dedicated music player, though. I do, too, but it, it you're losing the need for it now. You like, are it's losing, going you away. Are, you are losing the need for it, but I don't think I'll ever have Because I like having something. I, I, if I'm listening to music, I, I don't want the notification to pop up during the music i would rather be able to separate those two things. yeah that's true and like for instance not that i go running but it's nice if you're going for a jog or something throw your ipod in and not have to worry about ruining your phone or something like yeah, that. yeah it's it's good to have them separated especially like if you you know sometimes i'll listen to the earbuds when i'm going to sleep and if i got like a call or something while i was quiching out to some good tunes yeah i would think it would it would roust me from my slumber but at the end of the day, get an you know an iPhone with 160 gigs or 180 whatever it is, you know, that'll do her. Well, I mean, at at the end of the day, I want all of them. You know what I mean? Like if I if I could, because you know I, I want an iPad obviously, but now well, I'm looking yeah, yeah, at yeah, that yeah. Nexus tablet, the Nexus Seven. Yeah. And I'm thinking that's pretty cool too. I can see I can see having the iPad for at home and then taking the Nexus to go, so you're not walking around with a five hundred dollar computer all the Wait, time. Wait, so you want? I want two tablets. You, I want. A you seven want a inch desktop inch. at home. I want a desktop, a laptop. You want a laptop, a seven inch tablet, and a ten inch no, tablet. No, no, you don't a, need this. And a smartphone. You, you want you want your iPad at home, but then yep. on the go, you want your seven inch tablet, mm -hmm. your iPod. And well, the iPod stays in my car for the most part. Like, I use it as, I don't listen to the radio or anything. I just plug in the iPod. Yeah. It's mostly for driving is why mostly why I have the iPod. How long until, and it may be, uh, you know, installed now, but my car is from 2001, so I wouldn't know, until you, you can set your car up so it just loads your daily podcasts, you know, without having to deal with plugging in an iPod or anything. Um, soon, very soon. I mean, it's, if it's not there already, it might be there already. I've, a lot of cars have Pandora built into them now, but I haven't seen any, I've, any car that has iTunes built into it, which is what it would take. You would need iTunes or some sort of RSS reader. Yeah, I guess. Or, or, yeah, I mean, it, if you could run apps in general, but I guess then it would have to be the Apple car. Yeah, well, Android could easily pimp out their software or to, sure. uh, to a yeah. car. Yeah, but I feel like Apple wouldn't go so easily putting stuff in cars. 
Apple wouldn't put their stuff in cars like no. that. I doubt you'd ever see iOS 6 uh, on Unless a, it's like the Chevy. Griffin car, because that's the only company I see working so closely with Apple all the time. Griffin? Yeah. What does Griffin do? do well, they, no, they make like chargers and shit, don't they? Well, I mean, the iTrip, that's what I use for forever, you know, since I was basically in high school. I would always use the iTrip and, and the chargers, all that. That was always Griffin. You would always see, you know, I, I think that they... I never understood why they didn't just release that stuff themselves. Or if that's just like some weird sister company of them, I don't know. No, I think it's I think it's just that they're Apple and they're like, well, you know, we wouldn't they wouldn't make something like the eye trip unless they could make it cuz they say they won't make something unless they can make it perfect. And they still haven't really done that with anything, but yeah. But the fact it's is It's a silly thing to say in the first place, but I don't know. Oh, you know, they're not they're not in the accessory business too much, I don't think. I mean, that's all well and good, but the i trip was such an integral part, at least for me. I trip I trip sucked. I had it and I no, used it. it, didn't. it was it, it wasn't perfect. It was spotty at best. It was spotty. But the old one see after a while they came out with the one that you would plug into the uh the car outlet. But the oldest one you would plug into the top in the old school versions and you could just take that wherever it didn't it took up so little battery too that was the most beautiful thing and i would just have it in my car it was plugged into the top had the radio station and i would go to work take it with me change the radio at work to the thing whatever it was it was beautiful in that way and then the later ones that they came out with had to be plugged in they had to be powered separately. Yeah. Oh, what? That's the later models. That seems backwards. Uh, oh, they had two versions, but there was some reason why it was a total pain in the ass and it didn't work right. I can't remember now. I think that that one just took over the one that plugged into the cigarette lighter or whatever you call it. Yeah. So when I was uh, when I was walking around today, I went to the new little bookstore uh, over there on center just up there yeah and they have you know walking around looking at the books and on one of the books like you know how they prop up some books on a little thing yeah, on the yeah. shelf and there was one that had a big old mushroom on the cover and it was like the complete handbook to psilocybin mushrooms it had complete kits and information everything you need to be able to grow them oh really yeah and it had uh, a like index in the back of people they deemed safe to purchase spores from and really i was like i was like wow man and, and the book used all this language that it was like hey these are illegal for some reason where you live most likely yeah. so you can't just be you know ordering this stuff up but it was the most detailed like professional <laughs> uh manifest on on shroom production see not that i would do it but i think it would be awesome to do grow some psychedelic mushrooms it, it, it's so insane how long they'll lock you up for I if know. they catch you doing that i know just you know because they don't want you to be enlightened no they don't want you they don't want you to think any of those thoughts no it's so the the notion of federal jail time for cultivating a fungus it's silly. It's bizarre. I mean, you know, I guess it's in the same vein as all the stuff with pot, but it, it, I mean, it's way worse if you get busted with mushrooms, though, right? It's, it's way like worse. A million. It's times like an worse. automatic felony. Yeah, that that's bizarre to me. It's so it's wait. So is bizarre. it is it like a, a class A or whatever? All that. It's like a. Yeah, I mean. It's considered like a dangerous menace to society. Yeah, but I'm saying like weed, weed is too, right? The, the, I'm talking about like the class A substance or whatever. They yeah, call I, it. I mean, I don't know what class it is, but there's no like, if they catch you with them, there's no, there's no way you're getting off with a misdemeanor, really. See, but why would you ever get caught with it? You just eat them all and then you have the most intense trip of your life. Um,. Yeah, you slam them down. Right, that's what quick. you'd have to do. I mean, I don't care if how much you had. If they're closing it on you and you have a, you have a little satchel. I mean, yeah, because you're just gonna get busted in the car, right? If they come, you know. Otherwise, you're pretty much safe. You have to at least try. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, it's like it was at Super Troopers. And yeah. Yeah. And does that. yeah. There's a limit, though. What if you had a whole bunch? But, like, that's the thing. Don't don't drive with a whole bunch. No, why would you? Well, I mean, well unless you're a dealer, I guess. But Yeah, which is a silly thing to do anyways. Yeah. Another thing in that book, they were like, they were like, you might be tempted to uh, try to make money from this to try to be the the fungus kingpin in yeah. your neighborhood, and they were like, we can't recommend this. They said, well, how could anybody recommend it? Because for for what you would get busted for, you wouldn't, you don't even make that much off of it. Well, they said they said just like if you're gonna make these, just give them away. They were like, what better? Yeah. What, what could you do better than just to give give them? They didn't cost you anything. Yeah. Not, or not after the initial. I guess you got to buy the the equipment, which was like a whole Breaking Bad science kit. They were like, you're gonna need these flasks. Really. And this kind of thing. Yeah, dude. It was. It was intense. Is that man. like the growing water kind of stuff? They were like, they apparently grew on, uh, you, you had to get like wood chips and like, uh, what's it, like hops or something. I don't know. It was very similar to like a homebrew yeah. setup. Uh, I don't know. That would be sweet. I always thought, not so much that, but being like a, a, a botanist. Oh and, yeah, and th- I think that would be amazing. You know, f- figuring out your own strains of uh, of weed or whatever. But I don't know. It's just too risky. I, it, it's it's a shame because it would be so much fun to do, and I would I would have so much pride in like my strand and be like, you gotta try this, man. <laughs> the BB Express. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's that's not cool, man. You might as well be killing kids. I mean, running as far down as to the, the school law and just concerned. blasting them yeah. down. That's essentially what you're doing. Yeah, I don't know. I was thinking about it the other day. I was just sitting watching some TV, and I was just like, man, a lot of mushrooms would be a lot of fun right now. <laughs> <laughs> but it, I guess it always is. What else? So the other week I was talking about <laughs> what else? <laughs> Enough of that. I was talking. Well, it, you know, it petered down. Sure. Uh, I, you know, I was talking about those those tracks that you listen to while you meditate that are supposed to increase various things and yeah, yeah, affect your brain, condition your brains in certain ways. Um, I did it for like a week straight, pretty much every day. I had the, cause they, they want you to buy the tracks. Of course, they're usually pretty cheap, but I just have the free one that they give. It's like 15 minutes long. Yeah. And it could just be placebo effect. You know, I'm completely on board with that, but every single night, my dreams were intense. Well, what was the end game of the, what did they say? The end game was to increase melatonin, serotonin and DMT. Oh, okay. Which, you know, go to sleep better, feel right. better after you sleep, and have insane, like, insane dreams. That was kind of the thing of it. I thought See, it might help with, like, lucid dreaming. That's kind of weird because whenever I have super, super intense dreams, like, it's – I don't wake up refreshed. When I have super intense dreams and I wake up, I'm like, oh, oh. It depends when you when you wake up. Like if you wake up in the middle of a super intense dream, if you wake up in that REM sleep, you're gonna be you're gonna feel insane. Like that's not gonna be a good feeling. Yeah. But with these, I was able to. I, I slept through a whole night, and I I don't I don't recall what they were about. I should have written it down. But yeah, they were whatever. just they were very very. <laughs> don't you hate listening to other people when they're explaining? Well, a it dream doesn't to you? work for anybody else. That's why they need like dream TV, where you can actually <laughs> like watch somebody's dream and be like, damn, that's badass. It's the it's the most boring thing in the world hearing somebody's dream story because it. The whole thing with dreams is it's like it's the feeling that you have with within the dream. That's the weird thing. Yeah, you can, I guess it is. You can yeah. look at a painting or play a video game to see insane things, but you feel so well, that's different. A, that's a good in a point dream. because in dreams, it's it's very much like physical and emotional. Like it's not like you're watching something. You're in it. I mean, you're a hundred percent in it, and everything that's happening to you affects you, like yeah, emotionally and you know whatever else. But here's here's my proposition. You know how James Cameron is always like trying to go to the Mariana Trench and like Dude, always. He tried every week for the last six months. <laughs> yeah, well, he's always doing stuff like that. I mean, you know, uh, but. 
instead of spending all of his money on efforts to go like into the deepest parts of the ocean and look at the Titanic or whatever he's up to these days, I can't remember what he's been doing. But uh, I think he's building a spaceship too. I thought that was uh, what's his name, Virgin. Branson's doing that. Branson, but I think they're both yeah. doing it. Is Branson Spaceship One? Is that his baby? Mm, no, I think it's Virgin Space. He's, he oh puts yeah, Virgin you're ahead right. Of everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I watched a documentary on Spaceship One, but I can't remember who funded that one. It was just some rant. Like, you wouldn't recognize the name. Oh, Because okay. I remember reading about that years ago. Yeah. That, that they were like, oh, these guys can build spaceships like 10 times cheaper than NASA. Dude, that was the... <laughs> have you seen that documentary? It's no. really sweet. What's the name of it? Uh, I don't know. I watched it in college. And they, they developed a system so that uh, <clears throat> you would take... This spaceship one was was on the bottom of a plane, so you'd fly this plane as high as the plane could go, and then you would launch this pod off of it when it's already however many thousands of feet in the air, and it would take you into orbit, and then when you come back down, one of the most expensive things apparently about a space shuttle is during re-entry it gets so hot, all the stuff that they have to put on the ship so that it doesn't melt away or break apart. Oh, that's what makes it so heavy? Uh, inexpensive. Yeah. yeah. But what this thing did was it had these flaps that were down, and then during re-entry, they come up like uh, like wings, and they, they, they made it come down. I think the way that it, they explained it, and I haven't seen the thing forever, but... It was called, like, the feather system or something. So it came down at such a slow rate that the uh, when it entered the atmosphere, it didn't burn up. And so they didn't need to spend all these oh. millions of dollars on whatever extra smart, dude. extra paneling yeah. or whatever. They're, they're, they're like NASA's only and idea not, was, let's it, just it, have it crash down into Earth. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the thing of it is, it is brilliant, but it's not that brilliant. It's like, well, well put some wings out and just slow it down and it yeah. won't like burn <laughs> up, you know? They're like, so can we just make it kind of float down but they Does it have to crash they shaved off something like 80 percent of the cost of nasa by doing that or something like that it was absurd Maybe really NASA's cool too just got connections with the steel industry to make the well i don't know i'm not here to conspiracy. naysay nasa because i like nasa but I like nasa too but i feel like nasa should work more like google they got to get these Spaceship One guys in there and, and help right? them out. Like, you know? as, as soon as there's – as soon as – if you're NASA, as soon as you catch wind of somebody who can do what you do for 10 times cheaper, yeah. how do you not hire them immediately? Well, I guess because they have no budget to speak of whatsoever. Yeah, this company, this privately funded company probably has a lot more money than NASA. I would imagine so. I mean, well – NASA gets no love. NASA doesn't do anything anymore, do they? Well, they and just well, land thing things. on Mars. Oh, yeah, that's right. They, that was kind of a big deal. I guess so. But I want to see people on Mars. Well, that's what, we're, that's what we're trying for. I don't want to see any robots. I want to see people up robots there. Robots are cool. Eh, but to an extent. I mean, the rover's so been sweet. up there for what? I don't even know how many years. Well, this is our third thing that like lands on Mars. Great. But it's not that great. I want to see people there. I want to. We can't I do wanna, people yet. And, and what happened to that? Do you remember talk? And I'm sure they're still building it, or if it's just floating in space or whatever. That like inhabitable space station that they were building. That I think it was like um, America was teaming up with Russia to build this. this the international thing. space station. Whatever. Whatever. The, I don't know if this was the same thing, but they they wanted to colonize it by whatever. Whenever I heard about it, I think it was in high school, they wanted to have it colonized by like 2010 or 2020 or something like that, which I'm sure there's no way that's happening now. But No way. I think it would be sweet to have some crazy like... Extended settlement. Well, I want a space, space hotel is what I want. Yeah. I guess that's what I'm getting Just a at. bed and breakfast on the moon? Uh, I mean, a bed and breakfast, I guess. Golf would be cool up there. Moon golf. Sure. I think that would be kind of cool. I'd play some moon golf. But how cool is it that we actually have space stations floating around? In space? Like We can go to space. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that whole Branson thing supposedly isn't that far off either. I mean, Lance Bass was in space, for God's sakes. We can just go to space if we had a lot of money. Yeah, but he's special. 
I mean, he's really special. You heard that guy's voice? Yeah, he was the voice of our generation. And how? What if, in some twisted universe, Lance Bass did go down as, like, he was, like, the next Dylan, but he did the exact same thing. Like, he wasn't any different. It was just InSync's Lance Bass was the man. Uh, I don't know. I mean, we have the man in what capacity? Like, like the like, every man? No, or? like 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 the, musically. Musically, like he was like Bob Dylan or the Beatles or something, just yeah. completely. That, changed. that would be bizarre. I mean, well, has he released anything since we, he was Backstreet Boys or In Sync? He was or 98 NSYNC. Degrees. He was In Sync. Oh, okay. And I don't think he's done anything since then. Yeah. Except go to space. He went to space. Yeah. But still, that doesn't top uh, Justin Timberlake's career. No. Or was he Backstreet Boys? He was in sync as well. Well, who was in the Backstreet Boys then? They were they, they were all like one name guys. It was like Howie and Dave and they didn't have James last names. I'm sure they did, but you didn't say them. Huh? That's who was in the Backstreet Boys? I only remember Howie. <laughs> was was the Backstreet Boys the one with that dude with the goofy dread things, or was that in sync? Uh, I think that with was the both, I think it was both of them. I think that was in sync. Oh. Backstreet Boys was... I don't know. I I mean, it's all interchangeable. It was so bizarre that there was that period of time with, like, three or four competing boy bands, and they were just so huge. They and at the same time, there was, like, the Spice Girls, and I feel like there had to be some similar girl bands going on. But that's yeah. gone by the wayside. That's not a... Is that around anymore? I don't think it is. Well, that, that One Direction is like a boy band. There's, that's like five, like, 15-year-old kids. Okay, kids. yeah. I mean, uh, truthfully, I'm totally out of the loop, so it could be just reoccurring the same way when we were in... It's not It's not the same, because that, that Teeny Bopper music was just insane. See, but that's the thing then. that I bring up so often is... I, I always say, like, nobody's ever going to be as popular as, like, the Beatles or Elvis anymore. And that's just because back then, everybody just had their TV. And if a band came on that TV, everybody talked about that band. But now oh, totally. we have a, an infinite world that we could find anything we want. So when something gets big, it gets huge for a second, and then it dies. Exactly. Because... There, there, there was. You're right. Back in the day, you had the TV and you had like four channels to watch. I mean, look and at like when they you always talk like about Ed Johnny Sullivan Carson, show, Johnny Carson, yeah. yeah, getting so many viewers, and now it's not even a fraction. It's it's no. so absurdly, I don't know. Even like, even TV, it's it's kind of like I have a few shows that I like, but just who cares about TV anymore? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely uh, take it or leave it at this point. There's, I mean, the only thing that I have to watch now, and it, well, it's over, is Breaking Bad. But I still like Louis. Louis's awesome. Well, I, I, I'm starting now to to separate TV from uh, yeah. The, okay, the so you're talking about like NBC. It. I'm talking about the fact of like turning on your TV at a specific time or for even like a specific reason. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. Just the, the broadcasting senses. Sure. You know, I've actually found myself taking steps backward in that regard. And it's it's funny because it's a step forward and backward at the same time. Well, I like watching it live if I can. Yeah, I like but my, up on it. my whole thing of it is when TiVo came out, oh, my God, I had to have TiVo and the Internet. And now – because you can get everything you want on the internet. Well, I've eliminated cable, so I don't have TiVo anymore. So I just get everything on the computer. But I still have the DTV or whatever, uh, the free cable yeah, stuff. Yeah. So every day I tune in. Jeopardy, Wheel of Fortune. I basically don't watch anything else. I mean, I caught Hell's Kitchen and MasterChef, but no, you 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 adjust because they're especially. Well, in, you know, we did it. Yeah, yeah we did it. It's 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 because. Uh, that like sitting down in front of the TV and like eating or just like watching something for a half hour. Yeah, it's just something that ha it's just part of the part of the culture, you know. See, the thing that so I you'll noticed find ways that to enjoy things that's like that. happening now that didn't happen before when I had TiVo and I was kind of I guess spoiled uh, is it's kind of exciting. Like I'll get home from work. And I'll make my dinner and everything. And then it's like, oh, 6 o'clock. Okay, cool. Dinner is in the oven or whatever. I'm going to catch Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune. And then 
I time it so that my dinner's ready at 7 o'clock, and then the 7 o'clock show is on, and it's a beautiful thing. You know, if you organize your night in such a way to catch broadcast TV when it's live and raw... Live and raw. It's, it's just one of those things that's definitely going by the wayside because everybody just sets their TiVo and mm-hmm. they just watch it at their own convenience, be it, you know, they come home from the bars at 2 in the morning and watch something or, you know. My point is, watching live TV is a beautiful thing. It is. I guess that's all I got. I can't really go any further. That's it. <laughs> I, I, it was beautiful music, though. I wanted to, I wanted to start preaching, but I was. You wanted to shout you, it from the mountain well, you, you brought the music in at the end of my little tangent. <laughs> you had to keep going. <laughs> oh, but you know, it is what it is. TV, TV is great, though. I, I, I have such a passion for TV. When you find a good show and nobody else knows about it, and you have to like explain it to them. It's great. When you get somebody, you're like, no, trust me, you have to watch this. And then they come back later and they're like, dude, I checked out that show. Yep. Oh, my God. That's when you feel you're like, yeah, fuck yeah. I found that. There's, I found that. There's two sides of the, of the coin on that one that I think in one is especially for me now, which because Breaking Bad's super popular now. Everybody yeah. loves that. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Game of Thrones is still the one for me that, like... We got in when that you, one early. When you talk to somebody who's into Game of Thrones, you're, you're like, hell yeah, man. Like, let's talk about Game of Thrones. Yeah. And it's still, like, underground. You know, the way Dexter, like, used to be. Mm. Um, but but now, you know what blows at least Dexter, what blew Dexter wide open for me was Netflix. Thankfully, yeah. Netflix put that on, and now Netflix has Breaking Bad, which may be why Breaking Bad blew up so much. Yeah, it Netflix has a huge swing effect on shows like That's that. That's why I don't understand why HBO and Netflix can't hash out whatever they got to hash out so we can get HBO on Netflix. And I understand why HBO doesn't want to do it, and maybe they do, but they just can't come up with the right price, but... Everybody uses Netflix, so why don't you throw your old shows on there yeah. at least? They don't throw – I don't even think Sopranos is on Netflix. No, dude. No way. Nothing HBO is. But if you threw in old seasons – Just throw of, something old like like Mr. Show or something. Yeah. I would love to watch that. I've never seen it. I've never seen it either. I've only seen some YouTube clips. But there, there's old shows that they can't be making money on anymore that they could put on Netflix, and it could possibly draw traffic – because they could lump into the beginning and the end of the show some sort of HBO advertisement, and then the show would, you know, like, how is it negative? Like, what could be negative about that? Well, because the, the they, thing they, I, they aren't they, making money on it anymore. The thing I don't like, well, they're still making money on it. You can guarantee people are still Mr. buying. Mr. Show? Well, they might not be making money Mr. Show, but like it's Sopranos. Not old ass stuff that, that nobody cares about. Yeah, I don't think they have anything on Netflix. That's my. They point. don't, and uh, I agree with you that the best thing you can do for your network is to, especially put on like, say you got like the next season of a show coming up, and then you just put the first season on Netflix just enough because because most shows, if you watch, say it's in like its seventh season or something stupid like that. Yeah. If you watch the first season, you can go into the seventh season and watch it. And still, like after a few episodes, what kind of, kind feel of show fine. are you talking about? Though, Any show? Could... No way! I can't do that. I oh mean, yeah, because it always you, it you always can you, once you it? know the base characters. Like I understand you can do it, but I can't. Me personally, I just can't do that. I need to watch the progression. I hate it when I I get too far in, or, or, or I'll watch like the beginning and then hop too far forward. I hate that. I need to watch the progression of the show. Well, I did it I did it with Breaking Bad. I watched the first season when it was on and then I didn't watch it at all until the fourth season. And then I just and I still yeah. haven't seen a lot of the middle, but I you that's, know, yeah, that's, I know everything that happened because they do sh- the shows now are written so well that they they jump back and explain shit that they need to. And uh, it's cool that they do that. But I agree with you it's better if you see if you see the uh, see the progression, yeah. Uh, we're gonna take a break here. We have let me guess some jams. Who could it be? Could it be? It's not. 
Oh my god. It's Icarus Down. Oh Icarus Down. <laughs>
And we're back. Hello. Talking about the Avengers. It's a little old news, but Ben still hasn't seen Batman yet. I still want to talk about Batman. I know. I got to get on that. Uh, yeah, you do. It's it's so good. But uh, Avengers, yeah, the first hour is kind of slow, and it's it's silly how, like, right in the beginning, spoiler alert, the uh, Loki comes in with the, the Loki pokey stick, and he switches... Hawkeye and Black Widow like immediately and they're bad guys for like most of the movie. Yeah. They are the, the stupidest ones. Like who really wants to see them a lot? Yeah. Well, you want to see you want to see Black Widow a lot. Let's, yeah, let's be real, but so. whether she's good or bad it doesn't matter. Um But so you know they're out of the picture and then they they set it up but the next Avengers movie is probably going to be, you know, straight into action. Yeah. Grand scale cuz they they're they're priming Thanos for is, the is that the role. big who's Thanos? Is he the Silver Surfer guy? No, that's Galactus. Uh Thanos is like similar in scope. He's a totally epic bad guy. I don't know that much about him. Um I just know he's one of the more severe villains in the Marvel universe. Not quite on Galactus level. Or Galacticus. Or Galactus? I think it's Galactus. Galactus, yeah. Uh yeah, Thanos. Here we go. Oh, he was originally an Iron Man. Wait, um, does Galactus? Does he eat planets? Galactus eats planets for sustenance. Yeah. Okay. Why not? <laughs> I, I mean, I guess if you're that huge, what else are you gonna eat? Well, the the cra- Well, the thing is, uh, the or- originally he wasn't even like he was that huge, but he was like he would manifest himself as like a little guy in a purple suit with a crazy hat. Right. And. Um, now in movies, you know, he's got to be some huge cosmic so, entity. So, let me ask you this. If you're as big as Galactus, is would eating black holes be like eating Chinese food? You're just hungry right after? You Well, eating a black hole would uh, be counterintuitive to what Galactus would, has to do. He needs the... Because he, he doesn't eat any planet. He, need, he can only eat certain planets that have quality of life on it, which is enough to sustain him, which is what the Silver Surfer is. He is the herald of Galactus. He uh, goes out into the galaxy to find planets for Galactus to eat. Wait, but Galactus is a bad guy and Silver Surfer is a good guy, right? Silver Surfer... Or is he like a freelance whatever? Silver Surfer was technically... It will, it's, it, it's, it's complicated. We're going to go deep here. All right. So bear with I'll me. I'll buckle in. Silver Surfer what could be viewed as a bad guy in that in that original sense, and then when he gets to Earth, he meets the Fantastic Four, and they switch him, and he ends up going back and uh, stopping his relationship with Galactus. Yeah, which I saw in uh, but, the second movie, yeah. which was the worst thing I've <laughs> ever seen in my entire life. That movie's life. so dumb, which sucks because Galactus and Silver Surfer are so fucking cool. But because the, the 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 reason why the Silver Surfer is Galactus's herald is because. Galactus came to destroy his original planet. I forget the name of the planet, but his name was Norrin Rad. And he petitioned Galactus and said, you know, don't don't eat my people because, you know, it's like a love story. It was He wanted to save his wife. And uh, Yeah, but he can fly. Why didn't he go to a different planet? He couldn't fly on the planet. As Norrin Rad, he couldn't fly. And he, he, oh. he beseeched Galactus, basically, and said... You know, I'll be, I'll work for you. Like, you're doing all this work looking for planets. I'll find the planets for you. You eat them, just spare my planet. And yeah. Galactus said, okay, and he gave him the board, and he gave him his power to go out in the universe and find these planets. Oh. Because Galactus expends so, that, that's how they always beat Galactus whenever he comes. They can just, like, make him take too long that it's too much work to eat Earth, so he moves on. And you know now they got to deal with Galactus and this and that, and they reveal later somewhere in the storyline that Galactus isn't a bad guy either. Like the universe wouldn't function the way it does without Galactus. He's like he's part of the cosmic fiber, an inextricable part. Interesting. Love it. <laughs> I've spent too many hours Wikipedia, one thread to another. Sure. Going right down the rabbit hole. So that's Galactus. In a nutshell. In a nutshell. Yeah, I mean, he sounds like an interesting guy. I don't know if I'd be friends with him. But. Boy, did they, they, did, they, did they ruin that movie, though. The, the, oh the, the Fantastic Four franchise sucks. Like, I, I like the first one's okay. I, I didn't see the first one, but I watched the second one in a hotel room when I had nothing else to do. And, God, I have never seen anything that bad. It was just... 
I don't even know. One of the only things worse is the second Mortal Kombat movie. I never saw that one. Oh, you did yourself a favor. I'm sure the first one doesn't even hold up. The first Mortal Kombat? Yeah. Oh, I think it does. It's just because as a, I mean, well, let me just say this. As a kid, there was nothing cooler than that movie. Yeah. No, it, it holds up, man. It, it has like, it has a great deal of charm because it was like low budget B movie even for like 1996 when it came out. But it, it tells the story pretty cool, and you get to see Scorpion and Sub-Zero, and they're being pretty badass most of the time. You know what the line of that movie was for Hello, me? baby. Uh, not Did that you miss one. Mike? <laughs> not that one. For, for me. me, the line was Johnny Cage. Those were yeah. $500 sunglasses, Those asshole. Are the two. Those are the two lines that everybody who watched Yeah, because knew. for whatever reason, it was like, oh. Yeah, it was. Kid, so, him it, saying that was like a big deal. No, my, my fa- I went back and watched it a few years ago, and uh, there, there's a nuance to that movie that, that I didn't catch watching as, as a kid. Um, so, like, near the end of the movie when they're, they're trying to beat Goro. Yeah. They're like, Johnny Cage is about to fight him. And they go, they go, Johnny, you can't do it. Like, you're going to get crushed. Don't do it. And he says to whoever's doubting him, he says, don't worry, I have a plan. And then, you know, he beats Goro by doing the split and punching him in the nuts. Yeah. That was his plan. <laughs> as a kid, <laughs> that great. Was his plan. But as a full grown adult, that's the yeah. lamest thing ever. No, it was, it was so funny because I just loved the guy's mentality. He's like, I can beat this guy. I'm going to punch him in the nuts. But that's something a kid would come up with. <laughs> yeah. But how do you even know Goro has nuts? He appears to. Well, how do you know the they're there way? even? Exactly. And how do you know they're not like Made diamond of steel? hard? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he could have broken his hand. He probably could have. It was great though, because that was his plan. Like he was thinking about it. That wasn't the spur of the moment thing. But by the way, breaking it back down to the original Mortal Kombat game, I mean, worst characters in that game for for me at least, uh, Johnny Cage and Kano. Yeah, well, Johnny Cage and Kano are. And always have him pretty retarded. Uh, but but why was he such a big... He was a pretty large part of that movie, right? Well, yeah, because Johnny Cage is a huge, a huge part of like the Mortal Kombat mythos. Because he's... Wait, he's, I, he's just I, like, I, yeah. I could just be naive in this, but where did, where did all of the Mortal Kombat stuff arise was there like mortal kombat comics before the game no it was a game and it, was built, a game they, yeah, it was a game okay. first okay. that's what i the thought the game. um the uh believe it or not i also have a vast and extensive knowledge of mortal kombat universe well i believe that <laughs> and the first game takes place in the 10th mortal kombat the, okay. the, the thing is, is there's different realms, and the realms are always trying to invade each other. So the Elder Gods put into place the Mortal Kombat tournament. Mm. Now, if you win the Mortal Kombat tournament ten times in a row, you can assume the other realm. You can just take it. You can invade it. And going into Mortal Kombat 1, Outworld has won nine times. And they're about to. That's why Raiden's so serious about it. Yeah. And then, you know, Liu Kang steps up and, and wins. Resets the whole thing. So, see, I don't remember that universe that well, but these people just volunteer themselves to try and win. But you have to win ten times in order to get anything. And by the way, if you lose, you die. Well, right? no, you you don't have to win. Your re- a fighter from your realm has to win. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so these and are just expendable fighters, but these are p- the best fighters in the world. Right, but the 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 whole the whole thing is in the universe. The whole thing is is that it's it's not like it's not like you get to try every year. This is on like an eternal scale. You know, right, Raiden's yeah, yeah. the, the god of thunder in that in that universe, and and he recruits the fighters. And yeah, if if you lose, you chances are will die. But that's part of you know if you don't try. Your realm's gonna get taken over by Outworld, and that's not a pretty place to be. You know, you can tell that Raiden is super old because he popped up in uh, Big Trouble in Little China. Big Trouble in the eighties. Almost every character in the original Mortal Kombat is based off of a character in Big Trouble in Little China, and okay. I really well, want to see the movie. Obviously, Raiden. I, w- 
because I've never Obviously. seen it. Oh, you've never seen I've it. I've never seen Big Trouble in Little China, but I know that... It's a great movie. Yeah, I've heard it's good, and I know that it was the main inspiration for the Mortal Kombat characters. There's apparently, like, an ice guy in the movie, too. Oh, it's been so long since I've seen it. I can't remember. But, yeah, I mean, what a great movie. I have to see it. I need to know, because, yeah, Raiden is directly from there, Oh yeah. Oh, I mean, he most certainly is Raiden. Like, it's not anybody else. But you know. we were playing uh, in the week that we didn't have a t an HD TV, so we set up the Super Nintendo. We were playing a lot of Killer Instinct. Mm. That's a great game that needs a reboot. Does it? Yeah, man. I, I never got down with awesome. that game. That game was so fun, man. And the cause it, it was the only game that you could pull off like sixty four hit combos. That was the cool thing about it. Yeah, I'll give it that. And it had that like nonstop fight system where. If if you the, like the the match doesn't stop, it's not like match one, match two, match three. You sure. just have two health bars. Yeah. Great element, great characters, great you, fighting style. It kind of combined Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat techniques. You know the way that I always saw um, Killer Instinct, it was like the San Francisco Rush of fighting games. You what remember you that about? one? San Francisco Rush. Y the racing game. I remember Cruising USA. Cruise in USA was kind of on the same level, but it wasn't even as absurd. The thing that was great about uh, uh, San Francisco Rush was you could, it was so insane. You could just, you were in a race, you'd go off a ramp, you would land on top of a building. Oh, I vaguely remember this it, game. It was now. a great You're game. It was bells. super fun. Yeah. But it was the most insanely. It was just an insane racing game. There was nothing realistic about it whatsoever. But I guess that's what made it fun. And what they developed for that game that was really cool was they had like a... It wasn't a skate park, but they had like a bonus level that was all just crazy ramps and stuff like that. That you would just go off and... The whole thing about that game was you could just get insane air... And the physics just didn't work at all. Well, I I don't like realistic racing games. Like yeah, uh, like I, I can never Turismo get down with Gran like Turismo. That. They're 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 too hard for such little thrill to me. Yeah, there there was really no payoff. No, there wasn't. I mean, okay, you could get a new car, but uh, I don't know. It just wasn't for me. I, I'm more like I like. <laughs> kart by the way, those. Games, you know? The races where you'd actually get the new cars and you'd earn stuff were, I don't know if this is true or not, but I do think that it is true, were like two-hour races, like straight up two-hour races. Yeah, totally. That's insane. That, that I don't know. See, I was never that into racing games, though, Either. unless it was like Mario Kart. That I can get down on yeah, all day. Uh, and Diddy Kong Racing. That was a great game. F-Zero was fun, too, back way F -Zero back F-Zero I didn't play too much of, but Diddy Kong Racing, the thing that I loved about that game was you you played it through, then you played it through backwards, and then you went to space and then you fought the pig or whatever <laughs> whatever the boss man was. Were they the first game to have a mirror mode like that? Uh, as far as, like, racing games? Yeah. Well, what other racing game has a mirror mode? Mario Kart 64. Oh, Mario Kart 64 has mirror mode. They were probably first. They were definitely first. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The, had and all the be, Mario Kart right? games have mirror mode. Even the Super Nintendo? I don't mode? think the Super Nintendo one does. See, that was a great... You remember what was... Uh, I don't know that it's necessary. Oh, I know what it was. In the Super Nintendo mode, you could get the feather as one of your power-ups, and then you could jump. But you only had one jump. So was it like your... a high jump? No. Just a little? I thought you could always do the little jump with a little hop. No, I, th I, I mean, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure in the Super Nintendo mode, you would get the feather, and you could just do like a tiny jump. I don't remember that. I, I'm... I'm almost positive that I'm right on that. I haven't played a lot of the Super Nintendo. I didn't have it as a kid. The first one I bought was the uh, 64 version. Well, I'll tell you, if you don't rem remember the Super Nintendo version, the thing that was so weird about that game was your cart was locked into place and the track moved. So it was so, like, 
it it was so weird to play because you, you know what yeah, I'm talking I know about. Exactly like what you're talking your about. car is locked into place and and the track just moves around you. It was, it was so hard to play. Um, but it was fun. It one, was really fun. The ghost house level in that game was pretty much impossible. I always struggle with that level in in the Super Nintendo one. Man, I don't I I don't know if I remember that. You know what's the most underrated though in the series and I think might be the the best installment of the series is Mario Kart Double Dash for That's GameCube. a great game. The the added element of being a, able to have the two, two player power-ups and to change uh, and you could combine because they each had different specials. Yeah. So it was there was a lot of strategy yeah, that's in true. that game. It was the most strategic that, that one was, of all of them. I think that well, obviously the problem with that was nobody cared about that was GameCube, right? Yeah, nobody. Nobody did care cared about, about GameCube. GameCube. The only Except people who Super did Smash were the Brothers Nintendo Melee nerds, like me, right? That was that Melee was on GameCube. Melee was on GameCube. That, that was a great game. That was the selling point for GameCube. Metroid Prime has a, a good following too, but I thought you those know, games were horrible. I dropped off. I got to the power bombs in that game, and I dropped off. It was, it was too, too hard, hard yeah, and it, was it wasn't hard. fun enough. No. That game sucked. You but, had to scan everything. You know, it was that's the sad thing about it was the concept for that game was actually really cool. Yeah. But they didn't execute it right at all. But the thing is, we're in the minority here. Uh, I didn't realize this, but those games are well. They made three or four of them. Yeah, they made they made three. Uh, the the third one is on the Wii. Mm. That is one of the worst games I've ever played. That game sucked. Talk about hard to play. I, <clears throat> you know. I don't know what's up with the Wii. Like I, the new love... one comes out in like a month, two months. Yeah, I'm I'm stoked for that. I don't know if I'll actually get it. It's but... too expensive right now. the The one that's worth getting that has two pads and a game mm. is three hundred and fifty bucks. I guess that's not bad though. It's, but what it's is not it actually? Bad, but... It is. It's standalone system. It, standalone it's a system, standalone. Yeah. It's system. it's it's HD. It integrates with your TV, so you can like. I, I saw that. I, I remember maybe a year ago or whenever they released the the uh, promos for it or whatever. I I got really excited for it then because it looked sweet. Dude, yeah, it's dude's gonna playing be really Mario cool. on the TV. Oh, hey, I want to watch the game. Pauses it put on the game and he's just and playing Mario on pops thing. up That's on his thing. That's awesome. Yeah. That is really cool. I'll probably I I usually get systems like the next year cuz they almost always knock 100 bucks off of yeah. it and yeah. in the beginning there's not many games for it anyways. And but the thing that the low price when they have one that's 2.99, mm -hmm. it doesn't come with a game. That's so stupid. And by the way, that's on Nintendo. It is on Nintendo. You bundle yeah, you bundle that shit. But the thing is, is it's like almost a hundred percent backwards compatible to the Wii. That's cool. So yeah, and you get your your titles in HD then, and uh... you know, growing up, the present. I mean, there's a few presents that I remember. Uh, overall, else being just the most amazing thing. Oh yeah, and they're all video but game systems. <laughs> you're right. They are all video game systems. Yeah. And the one that always will stand out in my mind was. I got a Super Nintendo. I think it was for my birthday. A Super Nintendo with uh, Link to the Past. And my mom got me Super Metroid as well. Oof, that's starting you off I right. Mean, can you... By the way, I, I think I've mentioned this before, but those two games are two of the most replayable games of all time and two of my most favorite games yeah, of all time. Yeah, two of the time. best. Which, by the way, this morning... I, I started a new file on Link to the Past, ironically enough. Got no, through the light through world. It. Oh, my God. That game is the best. I, I, I got through the light world. I breezed through it. I'd like, I am I'm insane at that game. I would pit myself against almost anybody else in that game. The same as I would with Super Mario World, which we, we will do that contest. Yeah, I can't race you on Link to the Past, but I can race you on Super Mario World. You can race me, but you're, I, I don't know how you can beat me. I'm, I'm, so, I'm not bragging about how good I am at that game, but I've played it so many times. It's just like going through the motions for me. Yeah. I've played what, that game you, a million times. What, what do you think? I played it once 20 years ago? No, but but you're you're skeptical about how fast I can beat it, and I think that I can beat it that fast. I know you can't, so we'll find yeah, out. Well, under three hours was the under thing. Under three hours was the thing. I think that I can beat it in under three hours. I don't think you can. Nine, uh, 
Okay, fully beaten under three hours. I 96 think I, star under three hours. I, I really think I can beat it in under three hours. 96. This will be a good. This will be a good thing to do. In the, uh, it's gonna be a few months out. A winter thing. Yeah, I mean, well, why? I mean, the next time you and I don't have anything to do, we could pull it. Cause it's an ambitious project. Kind of, but what we could do is you could you could play from your room. I could play from my room, and we could just you stream it. So there's no, you know, you stream the screen. So there's no dispute. I mean, you know, you don't cut it. You just play it one sitting all the way through, and there's no lies. Uh no, I want to. I want to set up in the same. I want to set up two TVs next. I, to I each would other. rather do it that yeah. way. Just but, because it would, dude. It's it's a long. It's it is a long game. It's gonna be. It'd be more fun if we were playing it next to each other. I agree than, that it would be more fun. It'd be so much more fun. Yeah. I don't want to do it if uh, I'm at my house and you're at your house. And, no, it it would definitely be more boring. It would be that, that would be boring. I don't think I think we'd both stop and. But I think the most fun thing because then we do, have like pit stops if we're you know because you're gonna have to take a break to eat and shit. And yeah, things like that. you don't have to take a break to eat. You're not gonna sit down and beat that game. In in just in, in a little bit, you're not. It's gonna take you a while. No, under three hours. I, I'm saying it's closer to six. No way. Yeah. I may be off by an hour. It might take four, but there's no way it takes six. We'll find out. Super Metroid doesn't take. You can beat we, that we game went, in two and a half. We, we went over this. Super Metroid is a much smaller game. Plus, Super Metroid is a continuous game. The thing that you're not taking into consideration about Super Mario World is time spent watching t- Mario doing that little walk at the end of levels. Time spent on the overworld. Time spent reading those stupid ass things they make you read at the end of the castle. Well, you don't have to read them. You know, you can just skip them. But you skip it, and then it then it stays for I, like no, I know what seconds. you're saying. Yeah, yeah. There's there's a lot of time in that game where you're not playing you're yeah. watching stupid little mario cartoons yeah 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 and it's shit you can't skip not in any meaningful way i mean super metroid has like two scenes that are like a little bit of animated but the rest of it you can control the pace of but the my my point is that we're trying to you know i could beat that game so damn quick i'm talking 96 i'm, I'm talking full completion and for Super Metroid, you can full... Com- I don't know if you could full complete that game. That would be so hard. Yeah, that, that, no, that's that's a game that... That's a speedrun game. You don't worry about beating that 100%. To, like, not any long... Because there's a Metroid? lot of... Metroid? To get, like, all the missiles Yeah, but and you shit. can get stuck. If, if you try and speedrun that game, but you don't have enough health to get through, like, the last Norfair, you're, you're out of luck. Yeah, uh, well, you got to... You got to know the things you have to do. You yeah. got to be able to... Because if you don't yourself. have enough super missiles and you don't have enough energy tanks, you got to go back. Oh, man, I love Super and Metroid. It's it, one of the greatest games of all time. Yeah. It just simply is. I have so many fond memories. And the one thing they nailed in that game is the mood, the soundtrack. Like, oh, like, my God. Like when you first walk well, into that first... Well, how about the controls first, on that game? Are the physics the are beautiful. Best. But the uh, that like those the, the the scene where I forget what his name is, but the the first like big boss that comes out and he shoots the spikes out of his chest. Craid. Craid? No, that's not Craid. Craid's the the bird, which is technically uh, the first Ridley. boss. No, Ridley's. Ridley's the bird. The bird. You're right. Craid's yeah, it is Craid that is yeah. the big guy. Yeah. Uh, the music does it have that it's like. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, it's, it's great. Like, and oh, and you, the little things, the things are just falling down. down. Yeah. Ooh, and you first right. fight his head. And then because his head you and then know, he pops out. was in Metroid, you fought his head. And then because that was the greatest thing. I remember as a kid, I knew, I knew about Metroid. I played Metroid. Yeah, I bet you didn't get that far. No, that I game didn't. was hard. That game was really hard. Pretty much impossible. But when Super Metroid came out, the commercials for that game gave you goosebumps i don't know how well you remember those commercials but only from god YouTube. were they oh my god watching those and seeing that cray busts out and then you see his whole body it was crazy and then seeing the the different beams and whatever that samus could do i mean it was one of the most beautiful sequels ever oh yeah Ever. The first one had such a cool universe but it was just way too impossible it, yeah it was way too hard but, uh, I mean, as far as, well, what would you pit as, like, the best sequels ever? 
uh, video game sequels, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, Super, Super Metroid is de- is definitely there. Yeah. Are we a- talking as, direct as sequels? Super Mario World has to be, uh, you know, high on that list. Well, that's the obviously. thing, though. If we're talking about direct sequels, uh, no, then it would no, be Super Mario direct, 2, no. which would be, but I would say, any, a flop. Any game that was good, and then they just made it so much better. Right. Uh, we got super, super... The other one I'm thinking of is Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Was one of the most perfect games I've ever played in my life. You see, the, the, the reason... Unbelievably great. The reason I think we need to limit it to direct sequels is because at a certain point, then you're just naming installments in a series. Because can you really call like the new Super Mario Brothers a sequel? It's like the 15th one. I guess... It, it is technically a sequel, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. I then guess you like have to go like, by system. No, you can't go by system. That's not right. I think you just go with the, the second, the number two. The best number two yeah. of, of, of a game. Yeah. And in that case, Super Metroid. I mean, b- by high. far, Super of the Mar- franchise was the best. Also, I mean, clearly. Uh, Mario Kart 64 would be a second sequel, which well, just vastly improved on the original. That's the best one simply because at that point in time, up to this point in time, N64 has to be just, at least for multiplayer purposes, the best system of all time. For multiplayer? Yeah, I think we can say so. Because you could so it was the first one that you could just plug four controllers into. Yeah. And they, they you remember trying to get the for adapter it. for, like, uh, PlayStation. Oh, it was so stupid. It was Play- horrible. PlayStation is one of the worst systems of all time. PlayStation oh, yeah. sucks. I thought it sucked By the way, you ever do the, I think it sucks now. I, I did the system link. For the original PlayStation, you ever try that? It was horrible. No, never tried it. Never it was, had it. It was too. stupid. Not worth it. Totally bad. Yeah, PlayStation. But man, N sixty four. That gave me goosebumps. No, going back to going back anyway. to a best Christmas presents. I'll, I'll, oh yeah, bring it back it's, to that. It's etched in my memory getting a, a Nintendo sixty four for Christmas, and mine I got it late because, like I said, I usually get it a year after. Yeah. Oh, it, we never got anything brand new. It came bundled with Star Wars: Shadows of the Empire. Oh my god! And the first what level in there, when you get to fly that snow speeder around and take down the ATAT in three. That was the most brilliant. That was the most brilliant thing. That ever. was a video game in my house. That yeah. was that cool. That was I, something I, that I would play through because you couldn't just skip to that level, right? I would. It play, was the first level. It was. You opened on the snow speeders, yeah. Okay. Because that's like. Because I remember playing that part over and over and over again. It was hard. Just to, yeah, it was really. But it was hard. really fun. It was really hard, and I remember watching uh, Andrew do it, and I couldn't, and I was. So it's so silly, but I was so ashamed of myself because I found myself to be a better Star Wars fan than he was. <laughs> but I couldn't beat this, and he could. I hate it when the, you gotta hate it though when your friend can beat a part in a game that you can't beat. Yeah. It's so uh, demoralizing. Yeah. But sometimes you gotta have your friend beat a part in a game if <laughs> if you can't do it. I I just had I've always had too much pride to do that. I I, can, I could never hand off the controller. I could never just give it up and say that i couldn't do it i'll do it, it. There, there's 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 a point like because video games are supposed to be fun and if it's at a point where it's not fun to play it anymore but i still want to see the rest of it i'll yeah. let other people try to beat it but that being said there's certain games like like if you sit down on my mass effect file you better not save a damn thing you know what i mean that's the way i feel about every game though no unless what about it's like, like donkey kong or something like you're going back and you struggle well, like original or country? Well, g- well, country. As long as you are watching, that's fine. Yeah, of course you're watching. Yeah, it's you're there, and he's like, "Oh, dude, I like, I like Donkey but, Kong," and it's like, "Hey, play this but level." But you know, it sucks. And I, I would let it slide, but it did suck. Was if they got to play the boss, because well, there's, was, there's, 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 there's etiquette. Yeah. That if you're stepping up to beat something in a game, for you beat that part and then you hand the controller back. Right, right. But m- my point being, you at least have to have a fair shot at a boss. If, if it's your file and you don't get to play the boss of, a, of an area, that's such an integral part of any game. Oh, if yeah. you miss that, it's, it sucks. 
Yeah, I would. I, I mean, it I feels like an incomplete that. file, then. It is. It is, it is. And I know you like the 100% games. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I don't, I don't care to 100% games. And another thing I don't care about the whole new thing is achievements. Uh, that It's so lame because the achievements that they come up with now some sometimes are just... They're made just to be hard. Well, they're made to make you play the game for a million years. Yep. Like, I was talking to my buddy at work about StarCraft Two, and he was like, oh, dude, you get those achievements? And I'm like, I, I beat a level, and then I'm done with it, yeah. and I don't really revisit it. And he's like, dude, I get every single achievement, and you don't know how long that took. And I'm like, that's but exactly I guess, why I don't do it. I guess that's – and I know this is like – well, not that anybody's listening, but a rehash of uh, the last show was – no? We got one. All right. And uh, that's probably in the back. Nobody even listens anymore in syndication. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is just us talking. No, but and that's drinking that's cokes. why that's why Super Nintendo is the best system ever is because the games weren't too long or too too hard, but there was a lot to do in the games, and you could just rush through and beat them, and then go back and play them to hundred percent them. But it wasn't impossible. But it was difficult. That's. That's why that was, in my opinion, the most perfect. You know what? Uh, going on that point, and I agree with you that SNES is the best system, but we should just be a video game podcast. We should we should switch it. <laughs> we talked well, about doing that Well, that's one of our tangents. Ago. We could go on toys, too. This is true. If, if you want to um, break off on that tangent. What were we talking about, though? Super, Super Nintendo. Um, being the best. Oh, being the, be, being the best. I had, I had something to go off of, but... I lost it. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, back to Killer when we were playing Killer Instinct. Um, from turning it on to being in a fight was maybe 12 seconds. That's great. There's no load times on those old games. Whereas now, like, I was firing up DC versus Mortal Kombat Universe. It loads for, like, 45 seconds. That's the, that's the negative of the dashboard. The well, whole dashboard system. It's the, also the negative of these... Uh, you know, the more intense games. Yeah, clearly. There's a whole, like, intro credits, which I think is bullshit. There, there shouldn't be intro... There, okay, there should be the main company's logo, and then you get to the start screen. Everything else, put it in, like, a footer or whatever. But I don't want to see, like, the Ubisoft and then this one and whatever. Like, I don't want to see a million intros Yeah, before not every starts. time you it's put bullshit. the game on... Yeah, maybe, how about they program it so the first time you load it up, you have to watch everything, and after that, you can just push start and get in. Yeah, most of them you can skip, but you have to press it over and over again, and it is frustrating. Yeah, it is. Unless they use it as a mask for hiding the loading. Uh, that's true. They, they do probably do that. They're getting smart with that in-game. They do a good job yep. of it. Yeah. Like I remember in... Uh, Ironically enough, the uh, Metroid series, Metroid Prime, hmm. they said they got away with loading, with having like no they loading do screens. Long hallways or something. Th they would do uh, doors would take just a little longer than you would think they would to open because it was hiding the loading of the next room yeah. or the next area, which it's a pretty good way to do it. And they just have you know, little, like, you know, it's a science fiction door, so it can be like. Oh, okay, yeah. Then, That's you know, pretty smart. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty smart. I'm it's trying a good to think. To do it. The, I'll tell you what the worst and the, this made no sense was Batman Forever for God, that had to be Super Nintendo, that game. Uh, I don't I, been, I didn't play it. Well, okay, but when the game came out, think about it. I mean, the movie. Batman Forever yeah, had to have like come 92 out. 92 or 93. Okay, so that was Super Nintendo then. Oh, it would have been on Super Nintendo. Probably. Yeah. Or Je Sega, you know, you know whatever. No, Super Nintendo. Yeah. Uh, it had... Anytime you would leave a room and go into another one, it would say, please wait loading. Ah, on a cartridge. Gross. On a cartridge, it would say that. W what is the loading for? This is probably a... Shittily programmed game. A horribly programmed game. Because even Metroid, when you would switch rooms, it would just like hesitate for a second, the way they do in Mega Man, yeah. where they kind of freeze frame That's for a fine. second and then shift in. Yeah, right. make it a little cinematic. You don't have to 
But that's the point is have you ever have you seen any other cartridge game with with a loading screen? Uh no, I don't think never. so. Never. You never have because it doesn't exist. Just that one. Because it's all it's game. all based off of what? Like RAM? I don't know. I don't know how they run that stuff, but I don't know either. The like how a video game cartridge actually works makes no sense I, to I me. Think it has to be off of RAM, I think. Uh, yeah, I, you know. It looks like RAM if you look at the inside yeah, of the thing. Right. I, yeah, I think it is. Yeah. I think it is. I saw uh, that Microsoft filed for a, a patent for something for their Kinect that incorporates projectors that, like, beams onto your walls to give you like a more to, immersive like further experience. the screen yeah so it would uh, it would it would be the screen and then uh peripheral stuff projected on the walls kind of uh, like those tvs you remember those with the it had like backlighting that f- that uh followed the color on the that was on the screen I don't remember that why didn't those last that was a pretty good idea i don't even yeah it doesn't even ring you don't remember those no it's exactly what I said. It's it's you know if it was a really red screen, it would pr- project red behind it on on the walls. That's cool. It. it is cool, and it didn't last. And I don't understand why. That should have. I think that should have stayed around. Cool, but a little gimmicky. Maybe gimmicky, but it's not. It only makes it better. It in no way makes it worse. I agree. I agree. And and, and by the way, now with these modern TVs, you know they're putting all this money into making these TVs super thin. These, you know, what, you know, LCD. What what's the standard size now for TVs? Standard size? I would say thirty-two Sta- inches. Sta- no, no, sorry, standard big screen. Like, well, I would say a thirty-two inch TV is your standard like living room TV now. I would bet it's no the way. Most forty-two is standard. 42 is a pretty big TV. Not anymore. Yeah. No. Yeah, I think, I think I've seen on I Price is more... Right, they have 80 inches. That, right, right. That but those are, those are still really expensive. Yeah, they're huge. But 52 inches aren't, the, aren't that expensive anymore. It's still like 500 bucks. So a 42 is like 300. That's, that's when I, okay, the, the Time Warner guy that installed cable into my old place broke the the coax jack on my tv on my old tube tv so i went i was like well i don't want to buy a flat screen because i just want to get a super cheap tv so being stupid i went to best buy and was just looking at tvs the cheapest one i found was a tube tv but it was still 250 dollars for like a a whatever 32 inch or whatever it was and that was in, I don't know, 2008, but even so. Well, that 2008 was before HDTVs right, really it, dropped in price. Yeah, it all took over after that. It was but. like, because I remember I got mine, uh, 2010, 32 inches. It was $300 on Black Friday. Yeah. Which was like an insane deal at the time. And I agree with you that nowadays, if you're but buying TV a new price, TV. But TV price, 300 bucks. But yeah, nowadays, if you're buying a new TV, you're probably going to buy a 42-inch. Yeah. But I think, the, I think there's still a holdover. I think there's probably more 32 inches out there. Yeah, but I guess my point was if you, if you buy a TV now, yeah. that's the... Yeah, I would say probably Which 42, 42 would be the standard. But I'm curious because I, I bought a 52 four years ago or whenever it was. I'm curious... Like, do they have, like, 60 and 70 inches that are... Oh, yeah. Because I paid, like, two grand in uh, 08 when I got mine. So the two grand range now will get you what? Uh, Two grand now will get you, like... Uh, the Quatron, like the 3D. You, yeah, you can get 3D, but for, for that much is that's like the high end TVs now. Well, I saw I saw a thing uh, for a TV on Stumble Upon. It was like a two hundred fifty thousand dollar TV. It was insane. Uh, what was it? Diamond encrusted? Pretty much. No, it was like ninety inches, and I don't know. It was insane. It was some Japanese thing, but. Um, Lost my chain of thought again. No, those those really sweet TVs that don't have like a border around them. It's those just screen right to the edge. Those, those are like so those are like twenty five hundred dollars right now. And to me, that's like the the top top end in TV technology are the uh, picture to screen TVs. Yeah. Um, and uh, God, is that nice? Those yeah. look really cool. They 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 look 
just so gorgeous. But imagine, room. because a TV like that basically spills off its own border. You know, it's it's that close. It's, it's essentially the border of the TV. Yeah. So if you had that... that uh, a little glow behind it. I think it, it was called it ambient TV. I think that's what those were called, ambient TVs. It sounds like a good name for it. But imagine if you had that spilling off the screen and then around it was projected, you know, the color. And, and it didn't work perfectly, but say you were watching like a nature show, it was awesome. Oh, yeah. I just went into Best Buy. You could watch that forever. I remember like when uh, HD TV first came out, every, like everyone, the default thing to oh say was like, oh, dude, you got to see the nature shows. Yeah. I was at Best Buy the other but day. It, the but it is show. true. I mean, what else <laughs> would you so suggest cool. for somebody? Uh, no, you football? go straight. You go straight. Foot, football. football. Football and nature shows are yeah. like the two things. Yeah, because those are where the best cameras are at, I guess. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But did you watch, uh, this is off the subject, but did you watch that, I think it was called Life, that uh, documentary series that. Earth? Was that what it was called? Planet no, Earth? not Planet Earth. The one that was narrated by Oprah. And, I did watch uh, that. Yeah. Oh, dude, it was so. It, good. it was basically an extension of Planet Earth. It was. Though, right? It was like. I I did watch it. It was yeah. it was to Planet Earth what Super Metroid was to Metroid. Yeah, where they had um, uh, the one that I watched was the one where the the hawks or the falcons would pick up the goats and drop them off cliffs yeah. to kill them or whatever it was. It was insane. Uh, did you see the one with the toad that would like r- roll up in a ball and jump off cliffs and just go rolling down? No. Why? Why would he do that? It was a defense mechanism. Really? It, was, it was like this mountain toad, and like whenever like a predator would come to it, it would just ball up and just bail. <laughs> That's always so bizarre. You remember? You ever seen those? Uh, it was like a viral clip years ago was those uh i think they were little goats or something like that that you could go up to them and you just yell and when they get scared they stiffen up and act like they're dead have you ever seen that like the clip was these people going up to these goats and you just go like bah and these things jump in the air and And totally stand there no no they they totally stiffen out and fall over like they're dead and then like five seconds later they just get back to what they're doing weird but that was their defense mechanism was they just stiffen up and fall over it was hilarious uh, another great defense mechanism that as a child i was thought it was the coolest thing ever and thinking about it now as an adult it is in fact the coolest thing ever the blood out of the, the eye the blood out of the eyes i the, knew the, it before <laughs> you even said it as a kid i thought that was the most insane so cool. thing ever like a wolf comes out it was the horny toad yep uh yep. a wolf just comes up to it and it just squirts blood out of its Isn't eyes that bizarre? directly like, into that's the wolf's so eyes. insane it's it's so cool but i don't know i mean if you're talking most classic the detachable tail detachable tail, the octopus ink octopus ink is good too yeah i love uh the kind of underdog animals that just aren't going to get eaten for some ridiculous reason. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, then you got like the porcupine. Porcupine. That, that's a little less ridiculous though, because it, it's not ridiculous. In spikes, but it is projectile spikes. Well, wait a minute. Well, it's not ridiculous. He's just covered in spikes. It makes sense though. It makes more sense than squirting blood out of your eyes. It does make sense, but. It's kind of a miserable life for an animal, no? You can't. How, how do you cuddle up to uh, another porcupine? How do well, they I have think, sex? I don't by think they. The I was. You know, I I got there too. I was thinking about porcupine sex. But you know, you can pet a porcupine the yeah, one way, would, and you're but fine. I wouldn't though ever do that. So maybe. What? Well, he, it's not like he could thrust in and then not. Pull I bet the. Out. I bet the. I bet the. The female porcupine rolls on the back. They have a, a soft underside. And then the, the the spines will be on the ground, and then so you don't think he's ribbed for her pleasure? You, what are you asking? What if it's similar to the spikes? I don't know. I don't know what I'm asking. I mean, a ribbed porcupine dick. We've made it all the way to porcupine sex. <laughs> That's the mark of a truly great show. I think when I first met you, I you know, I knew we were gonna get there. I just didn't know when. Well, it's in the show notes. Porcupine sex. Oh, okay. Half hour, hour and a half in. Yeah, but I'm trying to think of other defense mechanisms that were really cool. 
Camouflage animals are pretty sweet yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, any chameleon sort of. Yeah, or like action. a leaf insects, things like that. Walking stick. That's a. But that's not really. It. I mean, it, I guess it is defense, but he's like that all day. Yeah, the well, camouflage. Yeah, different than what we were talking about. The animals that when confronted with something have like an oh shit response. Yeah, yeah. That's just oh, I know, hilarious. I know the other one, the um. What the hell is the vulture? Uh, help me out. The turkey vulture. Is it? Okay, That's whichever, whichever one. They they eat like the buzzard. You know, just, yeah, they'll just eat whatever dead animal laying around, but they they it weighs them down because they'll eat the whole thing. Whatever they find, they'll apparently just eat it all, and their uh, their defense. Is if something comes to attack them, then oh, do they just they, blast they them? Barf on them, yeah, totally. They just unload everything onto them. Oh, dude, apparently. vultures are so dirty. They're gross. They're creepy and gross. Vultures, not my kind of animal. No, not my cup of tea. That's for sure. You know what I love? I occasionally have to go to the pet store to buy supplies, and I love uh, pet stores. The smell. The smell is is it's it's not like a good smell, but it is kind of a welcoming smell. It's like, hey, this is a pet store. What pet stores uh, have? Because not all of them do. Which ones have puppies? Because that's what I want to see. It's cool to see. Not many anymore. This, the uh, the only one I can think of is on Silvernail. That's the only one that had it. And I, oh, they're not was, there anymore. They're yeah, they've been closed well, for a while. I yeah, they were. They'd... That was I was gonna say. They were the only one that had puppies. Uh, puppies, you gotta go through like breeders and stuff more more so. And people think it's cruel to like keep puppies in in pet stores now. It is. It really is. Yeah. Just think of all the asshole little kids that pound on the cages and. And they're in to... a little cage. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. It is kind of miserable for a puppy, I guess. You know, I... I bet they... they well, uh, they probably... I was going to say they maybe they take them out, but no, they're probably just in those cages, like, most of the time. Do you know what's really fallen by the wayside is the allure of the mall. When I was a kid, a mall had so much to offer, and now it's just, like, a barren wasteland. Um, I, I disagree. I, I enjoy malls. I like going to malls. I, I still like a mall mostly now for the food court because I'm I dig Love like the, the opportunity court. to get whatever you want. But as a kid, first of all, if if you're talking like Aladdin's Castle and KB Toys, which both aren't at you know uh, well, Brookfield it's, it's Square anymore. Yeah, it's it's different now though because the mall now well because Brookfield Square when we were kids was it was kind of dirty and it, it had, was it was but dirty. now it's like it's like an upscale place to be. They got the fun and the nice restaurants. And I the, understand that, but I'm talking about like I don't know. As a kid, it was exciting to go to the mall for those reasons. Well, you yeah, KB we're, toys. We're, we're adults now. It's not exciting to go. To, you just go there when you have to get some. So shit. you think that a kid finds the mall as exciting as we did? Oh as no kids? way! Because there's nothing there for kids anymore. That's my point. Yeah. No, there's nothing like, there for even, kids anymore. Even Cyber Station was pretty badass. I liked that place a lot. I used yeah. to go there all the time. Well, if they were smart, there would be somewhere for kids. Because that was the thing: the parents could just dump their kids at Aladdin's castle. But where, where I was getting at with this was. Uh, I don't know if you ever did this, but we were pretty lame when we would go on vacations. And a destination on the vacation would be we'd go to a mall and hang out there for, you know, a day or whatever. And this, I, I can't remember where it was, but they had a big ass pet store in the mall. And as a kid, oh, they also had a as seen on TV store in the mall with a pet store. Also a KB Toys, and I think that they had an arcade too. KB Toys was a really cool store. Oh, that was an excellent store. I, it was so it was the most colorful place I've ever been. Do you know it didn't hold up? Which I always heard about as a kid, and never saw it, and then finally when I did, I wasn't impressed. F A O Schwartz. Yeah, I, I don't. I've heard those syllables in that order before, but I don't know what it is. What it was was a super expensive like kids store, but. I think they were more into stuffed animals over action figures, and you better believe growing up, I was totally action figures all the way, obviously. 
uh, I heard on, uh, what was it, the other day, Bob and Brian, they were talking about, for whatever reason, toys. Oh, they, they were talking about this show, uh, Toy Hunters, that's on or something like that. And it sounds intriguing to me. I haven't seen it. But it's just these guys going around to old houses, finding old toys and stuff like that. And he was talking about how like they American found, Pickers, just yeah, for toys? for toys. That would be really cool. I, I want to watch it, and the show exists apparently. I haven't seen it, but uh, this dude found a Teddy Ruxpin, and he was freaking out about it. And the dude's like, "Oh, okay, I'll sell it to you for fifty bucks." And the guy's like, "How about twenty five? And they were just joking around about that. And then they got into. Um, they got into Kenner for whatever reason. They're like, you know what? I can't remember what Kenner sold. And I was just driving to work in the car. I was <laughs> like, Star Wars! Fuckers! Star Wars figures! Star Wars all day! And then I, I was just thinking in my head. And then, they, and then Hasbro bought them out, and it wasn't the same. And I don't know. It's, that's the little kid in me jumping out again. Yep. Any, anytime somebody mentions Kenner, the little kid in me just... Shines. Little through. bougie just busts on out. Yeah. That company can't be around anymore, can No it? way. Because I know as far as the action figures, Hasbro bought yeah, uh, did, Hasbro got that. Dude, Hasbro is big, man. Oh, they're huge. But how how long can they be huge for? Because the I feel like the board game No, for little kids the board game's gonna be around forever, right? Board game forever and there's there's a huge like gaming community that you don't like hear anything about. Like, D&D, do they make video games? Uh, well, I think they do. Well, I mean, th- they do to an extent because Magic the Gathering is a Hasbro property, no and kidding. there's yeah, there's. Did like, they get bought out? Yeah, Wizards got bought out by Hasbro. Oh, I, so Wizard got bought out by Hasbro. Well, Wizards of the Coast makes Magic and right. Dungeons and Dragons and all these things, yeah. but Wizards of the Coast is owned by Hasbro. Always? Um, not or always. They were their own entity. They were their own got... entity, like originally, but okay. then they got they got bought out. But from what I hear, there's they operate pretty much completely free of any corporate input from Hasbro. Well, I feel like that's the only way that something as bizarre as like magic cards could thrive yeah. is if they stayed in their niche environment. Yeah, you don't you don't tell the magic people or the D&D people how to how to make D&D, you know? It's like they've been doing it. They know you're yeah. just going to ruin it if you try to make it Hasbro-y. Oh, yeah. What was the other one Milton Bradley? Milton Bradley. Uh, let's see. Uh, Hasbro Mate- beat this Mattel? shit. Mattel. Um, Mattel has like Barbie. Yeah. And uh, I think Barbie's the main thing for Mattel. Yeah. Uh, what, what was the other one I just said? Milton Bradley. Milton Bradley. I think they pretty much just make board games. I think so too. And Hasbro is probably the biggest out of all of them. I would say. Oh, Mattel only because so Barbie's they were really all the popular. toys. Was Hasbro? I mean, obviously prior there. Hasbro makes yeah. Two, Hasbro but... makes toys and games. Yeah. Uh, Who else did toys? I don't know. I, I can't think. Yeah, Mattel yeah. made the toys. Um. Were you into like the, the? I mean, I guess this could be exclusive to Star Wars stuff again, but like the the twelve inches, you, the doll if, kind of stuff. I, I, that, I, my parents would, wouldn't buy those. They were because they, 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 they were like forty five bucks. I like, know. like I wouldn't buy it for me either. And plus, it, like I don't know how fun that would have been to have and play. I, I know I wanted it really oh, bad. Oh, I wanted it too. Because it looked so cool. They had they had like a Lando and a boat. Well, with by that. the they way, had with, all the with, with the the cardboard front, that was. When they eliminated that was episode one, when they took that away, and it ruined the 12 inches for me. Because before that, they had the cool black box with the, it kind of had rays, stars, and stuff on it with like a blue swipe on it. And it had a cardboard front cover that would swing open. And as far as, mm. obviously, I was... Yeah, uh, and it was plastic. You could see the, the toy on the on, inside. On the inside. Yeah. But then what I was saying was was episode, when episode one came out, they went away with the cardboard flap that went in front. But I thought that, that was the coolest part was you had these these toys with the picture of the thing on it. And then you would open it up and you would actually see the thing just like, you know, in there. For sure. It was really cool to me. I don't know why. I, uh, I googled toy companies and Hasbro is the number one search result. By, yeah, they uh, have to be. Oh, um. An independent operator here, uh, McFarlane. 
toys. I, that was the other one I was going to bring up, yeah. but I thought that they were a real small operation. Kenner Products is is on this list. Uh, apparently, Connects is its own thing. I thought they were like Mattel or something. Um, they they could be a branch of it. I don't know. Yeah, there we go. Mattel, McFarlane. I've never heard of most of these. You know, I feel like my brother is going to clean up on the whole McFarlane thing. He's got a lot invested there. From the beginning. Of, well, what was the the beginning of McFarlane? Cause I, I think it was like the Spawn uh, the spawn stuff. Like the old school Spawn yeah. figures that were in stores? I think that was where he got his like big break with okay, the Spawn stuff. That, that's not where he started. What Where my brother started was when he got into the movie stuff. When McFarlane started making the movie stuff, like the, uh, I think it was like Evil Dead and, no, that couldn't have been the first. The first was like, cause I, well, okay, if I break it down, he, he uh, did the Metal Gear Solid. McFarlane stuff. Toys Wikipedia entry number one overview number two Spawn figures, is the uh, hierarchy of content. Uh, so I think Spawn uh, no, was you're sorry. you're right, Spawn. But I'm I'm trying to think when my brother got into it because he has a huge collection of McFarlane toys, and I feel like I I know dragons, that, Tales of the Dragon Scrolls. I don't know horror that figures. Is. Yeah, that's what it was. Was he got into the horror stuff? Yeah. Face of Madness, Scarecrow, Wizard of Oz toys. Yeah. Um, Do you know what I had in my? It's kind of hilarious, the stuff that popped up in my Star Wars collection. And um, two things. Oh, dude, that he's got, he made Beatles figures. Yeah. I've never seen Beatles. McFarlane's. No, I remember that. I've seen the Kiss McFarlane. Steve has some of the Kiss McFarlane. I, I, I have Gene Simmons. I think this, this set is worth quite a bit. Well, I just have Gene Simmons. He was the rarest one. Uh, I told this before, but uh, Todd Vesely. Oh, yeah. He gave brought, it to you or whatever. Gave it to me as a gift. Who, like, who would do that? What child? I mean, obviously his mom just spoiled the shit out of him, but could you imagine going to a store, getting a toy, and then giving it away to somebody else? Uh, no, I couldn't. No, I don't consider myself to be that selfish of a person, but when it came to toys, yeah. I couldn't give that away, especially in package without, like, you didn't even get a chance to open it and, like, play around with it a little bit. He definitely had away. two. Yeah, he had to have. I guess that's what it was, is she got him two. Well, I think he probably, I don't think, maybe she didn't get him two, but maybe he bought one with his allowance and then she got him one. Or... No way. She bought it. She, she bought him two? two? Be because... I was huge into collecting toys. That's when I was really, really into it. And I told him that that was super rare. And he must have oh. gone to Spencer's Gifts. Which, well, how bizarre is that? That's where they sold all those, was Spencer's yeah. Gifts and Suncoast Pictures. Oh, I fucking miss Suncoast, man. That was a great Why? store. Overpriced DVDs. I loved the store. But it was fun damn, to go in was there. Overpriced. You, you remember get the rare old... stuff. I got like my Furry Curry DVDs there for $30 yeah. each. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So expensive. I mean, obviously, that's why it went under. They had sweet toys and, like, knickknacks there. Do you remember the set, the Spinal Tap set? No, not specifically. Can you... You should look that up because I'm curious. Was that it was McFarlane? Uh, I don't know if it was McFarlane, but uh, it was a it was a four-pack of the Spinal Tap guys. And when, I, when I, I first started working, when I was 14 years old, so that was a million and a half years ago. Easily. <laughs> but... I told myself with my first paycheck, and I think it was $80 or like $90. God, these look really stupid. That, but I told myself I was going to get that with my first paycheck, and I never did. But that's that's what I wanted to get with my first paycheck was the, the Are those four. Are No, that's not it. It was a big box. It was it was like a four-pack of the, the big ones. It wasn't toys. It was like dolls. Speaking of uh, toys... I have a collection of Yoda figures. Um, I, I, I always collected Star Wars toys, but I really honed in on Yoda. Yeah. I have like Yodas of all sizes and shapes. And uh, in sixth grade, Jed Sheppy won a life-size Yoda sculptor, you know, toy. I, I know what you're talking about. From yeah. Blockbuster, from yeah. a drawing. Yeah. Now, this of course produced great jealousy in me. 
And in sixth grade, I had money because I had a paper route. Yeah. So I was like the rich kid. Mm. I offered him $100 for it in sixth grade, and he turned me down. And uh, came to find out, you know, through seventh grade, eighth grade, and ninth grade, it was being used as a hat rack in his room. That's disgusting. I know. It would have been the corner piece Do you of my know collection. if it was, was it like a special edition? Yeah, thing? it was like a, it was a giveaway, a blockbuster, like big oh ass giveaway. Oh my God. And like he, a, like a, an official blockbuster giveaway thing? It, well, it, or it that wasn't store. Was that like, store. Okay. I mean, if, if, granted. It, so it might have been a bullshit prop. But it, it might, wasn't like an official it, Yoda, but it was still really fucking cool. Like, yeah, you yeah. can't just go get one. Right, right. No, I remember, um, yeah. Because I got a lot of people into it, and then a lot of people got stuff out of it that I didn't. Like, I'm talking as far as Star Wars. I remember uh, one of my brother's friends went to, got to go to a screening of one of the movies and got the Luke in ceremonial garb that they handed out at the theaters. Ooh. And I was... I could, I couldn't be more jealous. Like, it was the most... In- I wanted that in the worst way. Like, you I would have given him anything. I would have given him anything he wanted for that. And to this day, I bet that's worth a lot of money. I mean, well, as far as Star Wars stuff, it kind of dropped off. But Yeah, dude. But I still love it the same. I mean, I could go through my collection tomorrow and just... Just looking through it, I, it it's just fun. brings me back. Yeah. It's amazing. I love it. Yeah. Well, on that note. Yeah, let's let's bring her home. This has been Dead Air Radio. Thank you, all of you. All of you. What, thank you're you thanking me? Thank you, Ben. And I'm thanking you, the two listeners.